Stick It with Mr. Biggs is made possible by listeners like you. To support the show, go to askmrbiggs.com slash support. Stick it. And we're back. Yeah. It's Stick It with Mr. Biggs. That's right. That's right. My name is Mr. Biggs, here to answer your glue and adhesive questions, and with me is Roger. 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 <laughs> hey, good news, Roger. Ooh. I got good news. Mm-hmm. Remember the website? Mm-mm. We had a website for the uh, the show before. We right. had we had another show we used to do on a radio station, station. that, sh- radio that shall not sh- don't don't mention their name. Don't I don't even want to mention their name. Uh, Fifteen ninety. A.M. I'll okay. don't mention it, but the website is back up and running. You can go to askmrbiggs.com for all the episodes of uh, of Stick It with Mr. Biggs. Yeah. If you want to contact us and you forget what the email address is, because Roger sometimes says it very quickly, and he mumbles and he does not no. enunciate. Ask Mr. And Biggs. Ask if you find yourself. Not hearing clearly, you can always just go to the website, and then you could get the email address there. Ask and Mr. the email address ask, is as follows: go ask Mr. Biggs dot no ask, the email address ask Mr. Biggs at gmail dot com no, no 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 I'm sorry ask Biggscast Mr. at gmail dot no. com Biggs, oh, Biggscast at gmail dot com is the web mail roger yeah. roger you were right i'm sorry that i doubted you i'm gonna have to ask you to start taking notes again you were right write it down bigscast at gmail.com is, for the email is the web no email address that's the email address you right. know this you you've s- done this before yes no if people have questions and they want to send an email it's bigscast at gmail.com. Okay, that'll do. And then for the website, the website is different. It's ask Mr. Biggs, all one word with two G's, at no. No. Damn it. Ask Mr. Biggs.com. It seems unlikely we would be having this amount of difficulty yeah. with these most we've basic been, bits of information. We've been dealing with this information for quite, quite some time. But here's the thing it's not. Uh, a live broadcast anymore. It's a it's a podcast. So we're doing oh, what yeah. we're doing. What people all all over the world are doing. We're doing a podcast because that seems yeah. to be the the. We don't uh, need a radio station. We don't need them. We can we can do this on our own. So we can do it ourselves on internet now. In the it's the digital age. We don't even have to worry about the uh, the FCC anymore, Roger. Mm-mm. Did you think about that? We're not we're not confined by the. Uh, by the rules and regulations of the Federal Communications Commission anymore. We can say whatever we want. Think about that for a second, huh? <laughs> you can you can say anything on podcast. F- okay. All right. I wasn't I wa- yeah, I wasn't thinking. I was thinking I was Roger, thinking and- people are listening that are sensitive and if you start cursing, Shh. Roger, come on. They're not going to subscribe. Shh. All right. I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure how. To, what? I was, how do we? I was just seeing what would happen if I said those things. But see, we're still fine. Is there a way to mark the audio that we can? Can we dump that? Breaking news! Breaking news! Everybody, a portion of Manchester Avenue was closed around noon today after a passing vehicle smacked into the Grove's overhead sign, damaging the underside. Mm. In a prepared statement, the Grove Community Improvement District attributed the damage to a refuse truck. What is a refuse truck, Roger? That's a a garbage truck. Well, why didn't they just say garbage truck? I don't know. I mean, that's... I think that's... Speak clearly. That's Jeez, what the, people. 
That's what I have to say in newspapers, maybe. Is I, garbage a bad word? Are you not allowed to print garbage? I mean, we, we've we already established that you can say s***. <laughs> Sometimes in newspapers they try to get fancy, I think. Yeah. Anyway, the Grove Community Improvement District says, and I quote, immediately following the incident, we worked with the Metropolitan De- Police Department to close a portion of Manchester Avenue to ensure the safety of all vehicles and pedestrians in the area, and we are working to assess the damage and schedule repairs. I want to address directly the maintenance crew for the Grove Community Improvement District. Looking at the picture in the news story of that sign, it appears to be a, uh, I don't know, like a neon sign with a metal frame hmm. around it, and the garbage truck, I'm not going to say refuse because that's stupid, The garbage truck appears to have hit the bottom of the sign, causing some metal deformation and uh, a little bit of damage to the under. It doesn't look too bad, though. It looks looks fine. Your guys are going to be great. Uh, There's damage to the truck or the sign? The first thing you do is stop traffic. Get a guy out there with some white gloves and redirect traffic away from the area. Orange cones. Get some orange cones out there, too. Kind of so traffic can veer away from the uh, from the uh, 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 repair area. Yeah, I guess orange cones couldn't hurt Roger, but there's a guy out there with white gloves on. Who are you going to take seriously? An orange cone or a guy with a whistle and some handwear telling you where to go? Well, I just I when I'm out. In Which a, one are you going to take seriously? The uh, the cones stick out more than the guy with the gloves when I'm driving. Oh, I disagree. I I totally disagree. Roger, you, you and me, we don't see eye to eye on this. We're going to have to agree to disagree. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just that the cones are very, they're very bright shade of orange. And I... They're not authoritative, Roger. No one's going to listen to an orange cone. Well, Don't listen to Roger. He has no idea what he's talking about. Well... Cones are fine as a backup measure, but you need a guy out there for waving per- his hands. Personally, I I, uh, I noticed cones before oh, uh, the whistling man. When we agree to disagree, right. that does not mean that we're now going to continue disagreeing constantly and I'm, perpetually. I'm not because I'm not I'm not upset right now. I think I agree. Let's I agree okay. on disagreeing. There's a dis- so there's cones out there for Roger, and there's a guy with white gloves on for everyone else. There's a disagreement a whistle. on what yeah. we agree on. All right. Go get yourself a couple tubes of JB Weld. It's a metal epoxy mm. that we're going to use to reattach the bottom of that sign. And with it, we will need a cup in which to mix the epoxy. So bring a plastic cup, and not styrofoam. Do not bring styrofoam. You're going to want to bring a tongue depressor or a popsicle stick and maybe a couple of clamps. You can never have too many clamps, Roger. Yeah. You can't have too many of them. Keep them in a, a leather pouch. Mix out equal parts of the JB Weld. There's two tubes in there. Hmm. You ever used JB Weld before, Roger? I'm not sure. I I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure I've, I've, I haven't because I'm not sure what it is. There are some who say that you could repair a cracked engine block with JB Weld, and it will function as normal. Hmm. So you you squeeze out a little bit of the JB Weld from the black tube into the cup, and then a little bit from the red tube, try to get them about equal parts, and you mix them up until you have a uniform color. Now, this is uh, this is like a, you have to do a premix before you apply. Imagine you've got your cream, and you got your eggs, and you, you put them in a bowl, and instead of mixing it until well blended, you just kind of push it, push the yolks around with the back of a spoon. Is that going to make a good crepe? No. No, it will not. I the answer a, is it will not. I will. I use a, a whisk, and I also use half and D- half. Roger, Roger, don't use a whisk to blend up the JB Weld. You're going to want to use something that is disposable, because JB Weld once it cures. It will not come off, no matter what you do. Well, uh, you could throw this stuff into a campfire, and when the embers have burned out and the wood is all burned away, the JB Weld will still be there. What? 
why okay why would you do why would you i mean i've i've had i've been around a few it was just an example I, I it was just, i was just I, trying to make a point i don't remember I don't, i'm not I don't asking you to put anybody it. listen we're getting away f- we're right. getting away from right. the repair right. job so once you've got a uniform color in your cup climb on up that ladder and apply a little bit to the underside of the metal that's peeled down from the sign and mm-hmm. a little bit to the upper level where it attaches. Right. Now, here's where it's going to get tricky, and this is the reason you brought your clamps up there. Push the metal into position, and then once it uh, asks the guy down on the ground, hey, does this look good? Is this straight? And if he gives you the thumbs up and the okay, you take out your clamps and you clamp the metal in place in as many places as you can with as many clamps as you can bring. That's, yeah, There's like you said, there's it's not possible to have too many clamps in this situation now the good thing is is that those clamps are not permanent they're not going to be up there forever because that would be an unsightly sign i think we both agree the grove sign part of the allure of the grove sign are the aesthetics of it yeah the the, art deco appearance of it and clamps do not play into that very well it's the art deco design and the absence of clamps so after a couple of hours of directing traffic away from the area, go on back up and uh, test the affected area a little bit to make sure that the JB weld is uh, cured properly. If it doesn't move, then you're good. If it does move a little bit, put the clamp back on, go down the ladder, and go make some small talk with the guy and the gloves directing traffic. He's bored. He could use a break and a little bit of friendship at this point. He's got a tough. He's got a tough job. He's probably... You know, if he's ended you up, you spent some time as a crossing guard, if I remember correctly. Am I wrong? Well, you it was that. it was for kids. It was for kids. Yeah, of, yeah, it was fine. Yeah, that was a bad decision. Who, who greenlit that one? That was a bad idea. I think I did. I think I did a good job doing that. It's, All right. So no... to the uh, the the Grove City people with the broken sign, uh, use the JB Weld and stick it, stick it with Mister Biggs. <laughs> All those kids got home safe. This has been breaking news. So uh, if people if people want to send us a, 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 a he's a question, they can send the emails to bigscast at gmail. Bigscast at gmail.com. Send, it, send us your emails and we will read them on the podcast and, and uh, whip up an answer for you. And I've got an email right here. If you're ready right now, Mr. Biggs. Yeah, let's hear that email. All right, here it comes. I will fire when ready, and I am. So, ready. are you not ready? I'm ready are right. You... I'm. Uh, I'm ready right now. I got the email in front of me. I thought that since you were holding it, you were ready already. But I guess you wanted to. You wanted to do that weird ramp up to it. Go ahead, just read the email, Roger. All right, we're both ready. Here it comes. Yes, I'm ready. Just read the damn email. Dear dear Mr. Biggs, the nameplate badge fell off my Corvair last weekend. The area underneath is discolored and covered in sticky residue from the old glue. Can I just glue it back without removing the residue? Uh, what type of glue should I use? I have a hot glue gun, but have never used it. Signed, Paul in Arizona. The badge, the the area underneath the badge is 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 sticky. Well, the part the, the part the part that on the car that says Corvair fell off. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Oh well, th- th- this is good. This is this is good because uh, the, I had a similar problem on a uh, a golf cart. It uh, it had a, a chrome logo on the front of the golf cart right. that said uh, golf cart. It was an off brand. Right. Yeah. Sometimes those logos will come off. Other times, neighborhood kids will come by with their uh, flathead screwdriver, and they will pry off a good, attractive logo. They'll they'll just pry it right off your car, and they'll put a chain on it. Neighborhood hip hopsters stealing car logos. I don't care for it. I'm not a fan of that look, and I don't like the attitude or the baggy pants. Those badges from the older models will fall off. Whether uh, 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 a screwdriver is involved 
or not. Before we can even begin to uh, reapply your name badge for your car, you're going to want to get rid of all the, the residual glue from the, the, the body of the car. Hmm. And if you scrape it, you're bound to scrape the paint, which on a, on a Corvette, does he say the year? What year Corvair? Uh, it says a Corvair. Uh, sticky uh, residue. Okay. All right. Glue gun. I did, I, yeah. Nah, I Arizona. Mean. No, no mention of okay. the year. So to get the residue off your Corvair, uh, I would recommend some uh, some mineral oil and a and an old shop rag and try rubbing it off very gently because you don't want to scratch the uh, the finish. If the mineral oil doesn't uh, break it down, you may want to try Goo Gone. Goo Gone being this thing you can get to uh remove uh like say um goo rub some goo gone on the area where the adhesive uh remains on the car get that uh, completely cleaned off and do the same for the back of the emblem and then i don't want to i don't want to push 3m too much but they make a product that is perfect for this application oh my they're really yeah uh, having a good run here. Well, 3M is a superior company that sure. makes some uh, fantastic adhesives and uh, and tapes. Do they make goo gum? No, no, that's a different company. We're just using the goo gone to remove the residue of the old uh, vehicle logo. Goo gone. I'm and sorry. And then, and then after after the residue is all gone, you switch over to some 3M exterior attachment tape. It's a uh, number, uh, it says, hold on a second here. I got it. I've got it in my contacts. I got to scroll through here. Yeah, Let me take a look. Hold on okay, a second. That's okay. I'll fill. Oh, hold on. I'll fill. Uh, you use some goo gone to get rid of the extra, uh, gluey, sticky residue. And I'm guessing that's some sort of, uh, I don't know, al- al- alcohol, al- 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 alcohol type substances probably. You just put a uh, dab some in a rag and rub yeah, it. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Uh, it's the 3M product that will. Oh, yeah. Th- uh, 3M pro- You Go for product number 38583, exterior attachment tape. It's a double sided tape oh. with a very fine micro foam center substrate in the tape it's very very thin but it adheres to oddly shaped surfaces like corvair exteriors that's wow yeah and uh put a little bit of that on the back of your uh, your emblem and uh, cut it to uh to fit make sure it doesn't show out the side because that will look horrible mm-hmm. and you will not be allowed back into the corvair car club if you got a logo with tape underneath it yeah yeah I mean, if you're going to be in a in a Corvair car club, at the very least, in addition, oh, I mean, if you're going to have a Corvair, you can't show up with a a Corvair without a Corvair sign on it. Yeah, you gotta have the logo. They'll in they'll place. they'll still know that you have a Corvair because they're Corvair experts, but you're going to be sort of mocked. Yeah, the, I don't know what it is about Corvair owners; they are very judgy and. Uh... Always talking behind people's backs. They are dedicated, dedicated to their Corvairs, so though. That's, I mean, that's 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 you know, that's a classic. Yeah. Once you've applied the uh, the tape to the back of the lo- of the, your uh, your Corvair logo, you can remove the backing from the tape and uh, place it back on the vehicle. Now, I wouldn't just leave it like that i may want to put a couple of strips of masking tape over it to hold it in place make sure that it sets and keep it out of direct sunlight for uh, about 12 hours or so oh my park it in the garage where it belongs what about one of those uh uh parking lots a parking lot no No, the uh, parking space. Sp- uh, park it in the parking space. Par- uh, the things with the like you can park it. And you're underneath a, a structure with a roof. What did they call those? A house. You don't park it in the house. 
in the garage, Roger. Um, it's just uh, you just have like legs and a and a and a roof. It's like a parking. Uh, parking. Why don't you? Why don't you just park the car underneath a tree? How about that? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a. That'll work. I don't have a Corvair. I'm not sure. But you think you, you might be complicating issues a little bit here, Roger? I mean, it's not hard at this point. You've already done the repair. Right. You're just waiting for the tape to set properly. Yeah, That's and you don't. Doing. You don't want to do that in the sun. Well, if you leave it out in the sun, the heat might cause the tape to uh, delaminate from the logo or the vehicle. Oh, dear. And uh, you're going to get substandard results. You want an adhesion that's going to keep for the generations. I mean, this car is going to be passed down from generation to generation. Right. So we'll put a couple of strips of masking tape over it or maybe some painter's tape to hold it in place. And uh, for God's sakes, I certainly hope you put it on straight because once you put it on, that 3M exterior attachment tape is not coming off. Not even with goo gone. It's there for good. Because you stuck it with stick it. Stick it. With Mr. Biggs. You stick it with Mr. Biggs. And once again, the 3M. Uh, what's the model again? 35835. Uh, I don't know. I had, I had it in my phone contacts and I closed, I closed the okay. app. Hold on. But it's a 3M, 3M tape. I have I have all my favorites listed here. 3M uh, exterior attachment tape number 38583. There we go. There we go. And with that, you can stick it. Stick it. So there you go. Uh, that was uh, Paul from Arizona. And you got your Corvair all fixed up. The lo- well, I mean, yeah, and he's, he's still got to do the, the thing with the, the tape. But yeah, the, the, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, Paul. Yeah. Good luck. And send me a couple of pics. I want to I wanna see that sweet, sweet ride. Send it to bigscast at gmail.com. Uh, bigscast at gmail.com. Stick Close it. enough. Or askmrbigs.com for... All your uh, adhesive uh, questions and conundrums. Hey, you got questions about glues or tapes? Send them on in, and we'll uh, we'll we'll stick get it. you next time. We'll stick it on stick it with Mr. Biggs. Stick it. stick it, stick it, stick it with Mr. Biggs is supported by our generous friends via Patreon. A special thanks going out to Jaime, Henry, Justine, Paul. Stephen Lambert and Abignail Tringus. Uh, if you want to help support the show, go to askmrbigs.com slash support. And uh, stick it. Stick it. And stick it. Mr. Biggs. Car park? Car park. Pa- uh, the things with the, like you can park it and you're underneath the... Uh, park it in the parking space. Is it a car park where you park your car underneath... Car. You, you park your car in the car park. Car you... po- carport. Carport. Nah, that's not it. Stick it.